Hey, what's going on guys? Swiftly moving on with our Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass. The next section we're going to be taking a little dive into is transitions. And uh, primarily to start off this section, we're going to be focusing on the default video and audio transitions. And I have a little mini exercise lined up uh, for the uh, lecture directly after this one, where I'm actually going to be working you through this clip that you see on screen right now, where we're actually going to be exploring the um, sort of process of chopping all these uh, individual clips out and then adding transitions in between them to actually create a sequence where uh, it's not only just simple cuts as you see between me uh, walking across this field but also a transition between each of these cuts but just first off to introduce you guys to the default video and audio transitions we're going to navigate our way over to effects where you will be greeted with a uh, you know a list of your different effects of course but primarily what we're going to be focusing in on is the audio transition section and the video transitions section starting off with just opening up those video transitions now when you open up the video transitions you'll see there's a lot more than when you open up the audio transitions the audio transitions only offers you three key um, components and I'll be straight up with you guys the one I would suggest staying on the entire time would be the constant power this is going to be a nice fade in for example if we were to drag to here and um, maybe actually start this uh, where there's more audio here so say I would start it here um, uh, whereas if I give this a play right now and I will not talk when I give this a play you can hear this audio Let me give it a play So as you see there's audio right there straight from the beginning if I were to just drag in this constant power When I now give this a play without talking you will see a gradual increase in the audio starting from uh, Zero opposed to starting from the actual audio waves that they say down here. So that is automating a nice uh, decibel increase so as you see, let me give that one more play. This is a nice fade in of the audio right there, and the constant power is the one is currently set to default, but if you wanted to uh, change any of these other ones to the default transition, you could actually go ahead and right click, set selected as default transition. And whatever is set to the default transition is what will actually be used when you use the shortcut for transitions, which can be found when you go up to sequence and, for example, apply audio transition, control shift D, or apply video transition, control D. However, control shift D would simply be command shift D if you're on Mac and control D would be command D on Mac. So let us try doing the shortcut for the applying an audio transition, which would be control shift and D. And if we press that, you see instantly when we do that command, it pops up with that constant power, which is the one that is set to our default transition. But en en enough with the audio transitions, let's take a little look into the video transitions. And in terms of a default one, I think my cross dissolve is set to default. So if we were to press control D, that is going to pop us up with a cross dissolve right there on the beginning of um, of the particular clip. However, of course, if we were to go to, let's say, dip to white and right click that and set as default and then press control D, it's going to use a dip to white transition as it's using whichever is the default. I'm going to set cross dissolve back to default, but if we are actually to get rid of that there, I just want to show you a couple different varieties. So of course, the dissolves are very simple, you know, dissolves on screen, almost kind of like a fade in. Then we have 3D motion, which I tend to steer clear from. For example, let me show you the flip over. It's kind of just some cheesier um, basic transitions. The irises um, are essentially like a, a mask that builds onwards. You see, for example, like that. It's just a shape. Again, pretty basic and, um, and quite amateur, but by all means, uh, use these to begin with and start messing with. Again, a very amateur, very cheesy kind of page turn type of simulation effect right there. Um, likewise, just without kind of the, the page turn, almost like a mask out transition. Then, of course, you've got some slides. Of course, these are going to be um, variations of slides. So, for example, a push onwards like that. There's also um, probably a slide that's just a slight variation of that, which might be just a little bit slower. A split. I'm assuming this is going to obviously come through the middle. Yes. And essentially just a variety of different slides. A band slide. Let's have a look at that. Okay. So essentially like a little jigsaw puzzle right there. Some wipes. The wipes I am personally quite a big fan of. Um, not all of them look super nice. For example, the radio, uh, the radio wipe still looks a little bit 
cheesy. However, um, there is a, a, where is it? My favorite wipe is, I believe, this one. Yes. So uh, this one, if, if sped up, can be really nice. And also, the way you would actually go about increasing or decreasing the the transition speed would be to actually zoom in on the transition itself right here and you can select the transition itself by simply clicking the transition section which will pop up embedded in your actual video layer and then it is the same process as trimming where you can simply go to the end and uh, and start dragging that either out to create a longer transition or nice and far over there to create a nice quick transition um, to actually zoom that onto the uh, the screen just like that and that is a quite a quick walkthrough of the default transitions I am now going to um, simply create a mini exercise in the next thing just just let me show you this zoom let's have a look so this is again just a little cross zoom right there overall the the default audio uh, the default audio and video transitions are both cool however um, my point of view as a professional video editor is they do make your stuff look quite cheesy unless you're using some nice simple dissolves which is essentially all I use in the default video transitions but without further ado we're gonna crack on with a quick mini exercise and then we're gonna come back with some more advanced custom transitions <laughs> 